Uh, well, good afternoon. Uh, just taking the opportunity of a beautiful day to be outside once again. Uh, just mixing things up as far as where I do these videos. Uh, but uh, certainly this being the day before Christmas, uh, just wanted to give a shout out to all those that have participated to make this living activity what it was. Uh, it's uh, just been a rousing success in terms of the number of people we've had uh, driving through and uh, seeing the different representations of these miracles that have happened around Christmas, uh, the different stages of what the story tells in terms of all the things that God did to show that he was on the move. And uh, many have taken packets uh, where we had a message about the candy cane and how that is representative of Christ and his sacrifice, and uh, certainly a gospel presentation in terms of information shared in the packet. So I would certainly encourage you to uh, come out. Um, we will be keeping the lights on all night tonight, um, and so we will have a Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock tonight. Um, and so whether you want to take an opportunity, you know, barring it raining, uh, to, to walk around the parking lot, uh, I, you know, even though this is a drive-through living nativity, you know, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, it's really more impactful, you know, the slower you internalize what all the different efforts that were put forth and the beauty uh, that is here, you know, maybe to walk around uh, the, the, the parking lot. Um, but certainly if you want to even get the word out about the uh, Christmas Eve service tonight, it's going to be a real special night um, in terms of just remembering the Christmas story, a uh, lot, lot of neat songs that, that we have found that will be unique to this, this service and, and really meaningful in terms of the message uh, that will be presented in, in terms of that. Certainly ab appropriate for, for both believer and unbeliever alike. Um, as again, as we marvel at the work of God that he accomplished through Christmas. Um, so uh, I had Kelly actually create, create an event uh, for the Christmas Eve service, and I was kind of late coming in terms of you sharing that, you know, f to, f to to people, you know, on your Facebook pages. And as you can probably see, I'm I'm standing in the nativity now, you know, the beautiful picture that Tony and Giovanna Matera uh, created for us. Uh, but just stunning eh, the the artwork um, that that has been done by the Brocks, uh, by Melanie Barlow, and by the Materas. So we're gr so grateful uh, for that. But uh, in this time, uh, we need to get through a few more miracles. Uh, you know, looking at the miracles of Christmas, I counted them at ten. But as I've searched the scriptures and thought about it, I don't even know why I didn't think of the things that you know God has showed me this year. Uh, but there's even more than that in terms of just all that God did. You know, as we were looking at uh, just the life of Mary last night, I realized another miracle that happened is that Elizabeth, as Mary comes to her. Uh, the Holy Spirit fills Elizabeth, and, and he, God, speaks words to Mary, you know, as a reward, as an encouragement to her, who, in response to the angel's message to her, simply said, I'm your servant. Have it, have it be done to me as you've said. Like, this, there's nothing I, I seek to add to the equation in terms of what God has proclaimed to me, but for just believing and following. And so, certainly an indication of why Mary was chosen amongst all the people of all time, all the women of all time, that could be the mother of, the earthly mother of Jesus. You know, providing the, the, the female uh, genetics, um, you know, just, just think about what that meant in terms of all that Mary is, was, um, in, in terms of our celebration of Christmas. Uh, but, you know, in, in terms of just what other things God did that we haven't looked at, um, I, the, the census that was taken, you know, uh, we, we could, uh, you know, see a couple things happening here. You know, was God the one that inspired that census? Um, or was he knowing, you know, w you know one of the things that uh, made the time that Christ was sent perfect was the fact that this census would be taken. You know, when you think about... Um, you know how, how would how would Jesus how I'm sorry would God get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem? We knew you know from the promise that is in Micah, I believe it is, um, that talks about Bethlehem being blessed in terms of the Savior coming uh, through that town, um, and and uh, being born there. 
uh, you know, how, how, you know, certainly God could have showed up to Mary and Joseph and said, "Hey, Mary and Joseph, you know, head down to Bethlehem. That's where Jesus is supposed to be born." Uh, but you know, maybe people would say, you know, the more that uh, you know God directs Mary and Joseph to do things, then you know, doubters, detractors would say, "Ah, well, you know, that wasn't anything. You know, that that was just you know them thinking that." So the reason why Jesus is born in Bethlehem is that they made that happen. They knew the prophecy was in Micah, so they just went there and they're just saying. God told them. And so instead of doing that, God orchestrates a census. And again, whether he inspired it uh, so, so that could happen or whether he just knew that that census would be happening in that time. Um, and so therefore he has Jesus come at that same time. Again, it's just part of the work of God, part of the miracle of what God does, showing that he's on the scene, showing that he's doing something uh, significant to indicate that he's doing something special on the earth. You know, the other uh, miracle that happens certainly, you know, has to do with the angels coming to the shepherds. You know, uh, so much can be said about God choosing uh, to reveal the coming of the Christ. The first people that are informed of God coming is, is the shepherds. Um, and, you know, they, they, they were lower class of citizens, simple in their life, oftentimes disdained by the world. And yet it's those people, it's the unfaithful that people call. It's the disregarded that, that, that God calls. And, and that's who is welcomed to view the Christ child in the manger. You know, the only ones that were there while Jesus was being born, while Jesus is, again, his introduction to the world, Mary, Joseph, and a bunch of shepherds. You know, just, just imagine the creativity, the love, the mercy, the grace, just expressed in that event, in, in just the environment that God creates for his son being born in such humility, some, in simplicity, but a, a man that will change history, a, a man that will change the world, you know, a, the God-man who, who will be the sacrifice for sin and, and again, change mankind forever in, in terms of what happens. And, and who observes that? Just these shepherds. So again, the miracle of angels, you know, declaring that. Uh, but I think another people, another group of people are informed on that night in terms of Jesus being born, and this is the Magi. You know, when you think about the, the star that they say they say to have seen, you know, we, we, we know, uh, you know, what the Magi observed, you know, uh, because of the fact of what they communicate to Herod when they come through Jerusalem looking for the Christ child. And, and I don't believe, you know, if you've heard anything from me over the past several Christmases, I am really passionate about the idea that the three wise men, the three kings, the three magi, um, were, were, were not at the manger. They were, they were not there for Jesus' birth. Rather, the star that they saw was either created or orchestrated by God at that time. And so the reason why Herod was looking for babies and then chose to slaughter babies two years old and younger is because it took about two years for the, for the Magi to make it from Persia, Babylon to Bethlehem. And, um, and, and so, they, you know, and, and maybe it was a little less than that, but, but, but basically the, the whole point being is that the, the, the kings were not at the stable. They met the child at a house. Um, and, and, and so, you know, who knows how long it would take, you know, for, for kings traveling. I don't know, you know, in, in that time frame, they wouldn't be un, in a rush, you know, or need to be in a rush in terms of discovering it. But when you just think about what God did to, cr to create that star, you know, again, if you've heard me talk about that at any point in time, you know, what I always say is, what does the father give the son for his birthday? <laughs> you know, the one one member of the Trinity giving to the another other member of the Trinity. Well, how fitting that he creates a star for him, and I think that that could be what the Magi observed. But it's also curious to think, particularly as as this year there's been hubbub going around about this Bethlehem star, the lining up of different uh, uh, astronomical units. You know, in terms of creating more light. You know, is it, it, I think it's neat to think about whether God just used the natural pattern, the natural parts of what he had already put in the, star, put in the sky, but organizing them in such a way in terms of what the Magi would see. You know, what we can know 
at these these magi these magi these wise men you know they would be they're they're astronomers or maybe even astrologers you know but they are looking at the stars they are looking uh, to see what's happening in the in in this in the movements you know because you know basically at that time you know they would think that you know things that happen in the heavens are are an indication or a sign for things that have happened on the earth and and so therefore they they see this this star this this astronomical anomaly again whether it's something new that god created or whether again he just aligned the planets in a certain way again all miracle all a reflection of god's movement all of all you know giving a sign to those who would know that it's there <laughs> again and so these people that would be looking at the stars all, already and so basically they see this star and you know, I think it is the Hebrews' influence, the Jewish influence in Babylon and Persia. You know, if you think about Daniel, if you think about Maj- Rat, oh, what, uh, Meshach, Rat- <laughs> why am I not remembering three boys, their names? Uh, last night I couldn't even remember the name Gideon. So Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, right? Did I get those right? But anyways, you know what I'm talking about. But basically that Jewish influence that was there, you know, particularly for for Daniel to be amongst those people, amongst the wise, amongst the ones, the you know the counselors of the king, you know that that at that point in time they they were magicians, they were astrologers, they were astronomers, they were you know people again that were looking for different ways to guide the king. And yet, what Daniel, the mark of Daniel was he he had knowledge of God, that God was the one revealing things to him. And and so as these magi see the star, and then remember, what, remember those Jews, remember that promise, remember what they always talked about—a Messiah coming, a Messiah being born—and so they make that connection in terms of the location of the star and where it, where they're going to, or or once you know whatever it, it, God has created in terms of the skies that they would observe. You know, maybe another thing that would extend their journey is they could only travel at night, um, which would be very odd at that time um, because they were following the star. Um, and and so, uh, you know, God just doing that miraculous thing to draw people to the Savior, to, to, to let people, both Jew and Gentile, know that God was on the move. Uh, the other thing that happens in, in terms of just the miracles that God does is to... Prophet, a prophet and a prophetess, you know, a, a gentleman named Simeon and a prophetess called Anna that is mentioned in the book of Luke chapter 2, you know, and, 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 and just a great thing that, that God does. Again, a, a sign that he's on the move, that he's doing something unique. Again, another miracle and another uh, manifestation of himself in, in terms of revelation that happens, you know, through these through these two people that speak about the child, that speak about, about the significance of this child. And so basically, um, you know, Mary and Joseph would be ordered, you know, not ordered, you know, the law would dictate that on the eighth day, Jesus would have to come to be sacrificed. I'm a sacrifice. Circumcised. That might, that might seem like a sacrifice on some level in terms of, you know, just what, what the baby went through in terms of that. But no, not a sacrifice, but this was his circumcision. And so basically on the eighth day, he's presented in the temple. And as that's happening... This this guy Simeon comes up and declares a prophecy over Jesus, and I just love the words that um, he says. This is in Luke chapter two, starting at verse twenty-eight. It says Simeon took him in his arms. This is Jesus. You know, just imagine. You know, you're, you're Mary and Joseph. Your son has been circumcised. You're trying to c- c- console him, comfort him. You know, and then this guy just comes over and grabs him from your arms. <laughs> But Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, "Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may as you you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight sight of all people, a light of for revelation to the Gentiles and for for the glory to your people, Israel." And so, basically, what Simeon is telling, what he's saying, is that God had promised him. You know, Simeon, I'm going to keep you around until the Messiah is born. Until the one who will save the whole world is born. Because you're going to see it. 
And so basically, just think about the, the excitement that Simeon has to see Jesus. You know, God, you, you, you fulfilled your promise. You've told me I was going to observe the Christ child. I was going to observe the son of David, the, the promised Messiah, the one who would, again, fulfill and, and bring together all the different strains of prophecy that, that were promised to, to, to Abraham, to, to, to Jacob, to David, um, and, and just bringing it all together. You know, again, we, um, what was it in... It's uh, what, what the angel says, actually, what the angel says to Mary in talking about Jesus. It, it talks both about his father, David, and also a promise fulfilled through Jacob. And so, again, even, even that promise of, that, that flows through Abraham, that went from Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob, Jesus is a, is a completion of that as well. And, and, and so that's what Simeon sees, that... that you know, now that this, this child is born, that, that all these different things that God has orchestrated and worked and promised are being fulfilled through this child. And I love what, I love what Simeon says in terms of the, a light of revelation to the Gentiles. That, that, that he, you know, one of the Jews that got it. You know, that, that the whole purpose for the Jewish nation was not for them to keep God to themselves, but to reveal God to the nations that God made the Jews special so the Gentiles would know him too. And, and that's what Simeon is saying. You know, more than anything else, Jesus reflects that in terms of just the salvation he offers to all people. You know, he, he would complete the sacrificial system that the Jews were very well familiar with, but he would also then be the sacrifice that the that the, that Gentiles required as well in terms of how we how we are made right with God. And so hopefully as you think about Christmas, as you think about just what we celebrate, what we uh, just worship God in the context of, what, what we occupy ourselves with, I, 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 hope, you know, I, I hope you think more deeply about these miracles. I, think you th I hope you think more deeply about all the things that God did to show, like I've said, uh, that he was on the move, that he was doing something special, that he was doing something unique. And, and so as Jesus comes, and now he's here, people would say, oh, wait a minute, now there's something special about this baby. There's certainly special, something special about this environment, this time in history, this, 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 this ge geographic location even, in terms of what God is doing amongst the Jewish people in this small area of the world called Palestine, Canaan, um, you know, the, the, the promised land. And, and, and God revealing himself in, in, in this way. And so what, what a glorious thing to celebrate. How appropriate it is and how fitting it would be that there would be a day. I don't think it even matters, you know, whether, you know, whether December is the right day, you know, whether it's another, you know, more fitting day to celebrate the birth of Christ. To me, that's not, not what is significant. What is significant is that we choose a day and, you know, as the world occupies itself with all, all different things, some that are godly and some that are just, uh, just idolatrous, <laughs> they're, they're, they're just a replacement of Jesus, a distraction, you know, a great distraction, you know, in terms of just the, the, the greater message of Christ. You know, as the world is occupied with those things, let, let's just keep in our minds and, 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 and be speaking it on our lips that, no, this season, that this time, this date, this day is su su celebrating the birth of, of the Son of God. Because, you know, what is even significant when you think about here is the God of eternity, but he chooses to accomplish something on a particular day in history. And again, that is worthy of celebration. That, that, that is worthy of recognition. That is worthy of sanctifying a time to say, yes, as significant as Jesus' death was outside of his birth, you know, he wouldn't be here. And, and so God, God ordaining that day and, 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 again, surrounding it with all these miracles to show that he thought it was special. He, he was doing something unique and different. And, and he's just giving us all these indications of that. So uh, certainly a heartfelt Merry Christmas. 
And to all those uh, hearing this video, certainly all those uh, that of the Living Hope community and, and even the greater community of Christ here in Rhode Island in terms of just uh, all, the, all that we share together in terms of the wonder of what this season is. So, uh, God bless you, and I, I hope you join us tonight, uh, either virtually or in person, for a Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock.